Hi there, and welcome back. In this video, I want to show you a new product that the SketchUp folks just introduced at 3D Basecamp. It's called Trimble Creator, um, and it's it's uh, an interesting concept. Uh, so what it basically does is it lets you create a uh, define parametric object. And now in my case here, it's some kind of a sine wave. And then, of course, you can keep this parametric and um, use it as a, as a parametric component. All of this is based on a graph type um, programming uh, environment that you can see down here. And I'll, I'll walk you through all of that uh, as, a, as an intro in a second. And then in later videos, I'm going to show you um, what's uh, possible with this. Now, all of this is behind, of course, the live components that SketchUp had introduced a little while ago. And um, that's what makes it makes it work. And finally, we get to use it. All right, so we'll get started on looking at this in a second. Don't forget to check out my book, Architectural Design with SketchUp. It covers all of these topics and makes for a great desk reference. You can find it where books are sold. There's also a link to it on my site, sketchupfordesign.com, together with lots of additional tutorials and news. Okay, let's get going. So Live Components was something that was introduced uh, with one of the recent versions of SketchUp. It's an interesting concept in that, and, and by the way, this is what I'm showing you here on the 3D Warehouse. Uh, you can download Live Components from the SketchUp Labs part of the web warehouse. So it's, it's interesting in that it allows you to configure components and you know, do something similar to what was possible with the dynamic components, but in in a different way and in somewhat a more powerful way. So one use case of this for this is, of course, a product, you know, configurator of sorts, where you can have a variety of parameters and design options right there. And then once you're happy with the design, you can download it into your SketchUp model. And as it turns out, this component will then remain editable within SketchUp. And you can uh, keep configuring it as much as you want um, within the modeling environment. So this is great for products. This is great for other things too. And there are, of course, some examples, you know, building parts, um, you know, all of those sorts of things. Now, up until recently, we weren't able to make our own. Um, this was, you know, uh, just a, a demo to, to be used. And now we have Triple Creator, which is basically the, the authoring tool for this. And what you do in here, and you can find this um, at Trimble, uh, sorry, creator.trimble.com. What you do in here is you define um, all of these uh, parameters and the geometry in a multitude of ways. One way is you can actually use built-in geometry, which I have here, boxes, um, and, and create something out of that. You know, all kinds of primitives are available. Or you can import your own geometry from SketchUp, for example and then have some kind of a rule to do something with that, you know, create copies or arrange in a particular way and so on and so forth. So there's, there's quite a bit of power there. And that power comes from this you know, node based um, uh, programming environment where you have, you know, nodes that are either parameters or you have nodes that create something. Um, and then nodes that do something, you know, divide, multiply and so on and so forth. And then you chain those up with a graphic set of you know strings and linkages basically, and then you um, get something where these parameters that I just showed you right here are exposed within the Trimble Creator environment right here, or then of course uh, within SketchUp when you download the whole thing into into SketchUp. Okay, so um, this looks somewhat familiar for anyone in the AAC world. Um, you know, Grasshopper for Rhino was using a similar programming environment. Dynamo in, for Revit does something similar too. And it's actually really exciting to see this now available for SketchUp and maybe other Trimble products. You know, after all, this is, this is done by Trimble. So what I want to do right now here is give you a quick intro just on some general 
topics and how, how you use this. Um, and I'll walk you step by step through some examples in some other videos. Okay, so when you fire up the creator website at, at creator.trimble.com, this is how it looks like. And it's it's a better, there's, there's a little better thing up there. Um, and so there's a good chance that things are going to change. Um, I have my own wish list of things that I would like them to, you know, to, to fix in here. Um, but uh, that will happen <laughs> and performance will improve and so so keep that in mind while you're working with this obviously okay so here's my <laughs> standard workflow when i do this i first of all go to the bottom right and you know, this little fly out here and that lets me arrange those panels so that seems to work much better in my mind um but uh, uh completely up to you how you want to do it obviously there's a there's this you know model environment where you see a preview of what's happening within the coordinate system right there, and then of course there's the programming environment on the right where you see what's behind all of that. Now, there's a few other tips and tricks that um, I have learned <laughs> talking to the makers of this. Um, so in this programming environment on the right, it's all in this weird ISO um, view, which I'm not 100% sure if I like it. So there's a, there's a keyboard shortcut C. And if you tap that, you can toggle between parallel and ISO view. And somehow I like this better. OK. Completely up to you again, you know, what you do there. OK, so that's, that's one thing then there are a few options on the model view as well you know again there's a fly out there that whether you want to show wireframe points grid toggle and then orthographic or parallel uh, or perspective view so parallel or perspective view um that works right there and then of course you can frame everything and if i remember right orthographic yep this switch actually is a keyboard toggle o and then frame all, so in case you zoomed in, is keyboard F, there you go, then it comes out. So sometimes that's useful as a, as a shortcut. Then on the left here, you have a few menu items. I'm expecting there to be more at some point, obviously, but one is new graph, you know, reset the whole thing, clear it, get a new one. Graph browser <clears throat> is useful. Mine somehow doesn't seem to want to work right now, but if you want to play around with the ones that I've been doing under all, you can search for Alex Schreier, then you find mine or or everybody else's because everything here is 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 public right now. Below that are the parameters. If you set parameters in your grid on the right, those are exposed on the left here, and you can you know use the sliders to do things. And it happens in real time. Now, one thing that happens here, of course, is that this is all web-based. So the geometry and the logic is all on a, you know, on a server somewhere, and gets streamed to your um, uh, either web interface as you have right here, or the web version of SketchUp, or the downloaded version of SketchUp. So there is a bit of a lag, you know, when I move this thing around here, you'll see. It takes a little while, um, and that's because all of that gets streamed. But that has benefits too, because now all of a sudden I can use this in the web version of SketchUp, which I couldn't do with dynamic components. So that is, of course, a great improvement. But keep in mind that that is what's behind this whole thing. It's all web-based, and that has some flexibility, obviously. Below that is an open in SketchUp. A button and I'll show you uh, at the end how that works that allows you to you know download your newly created component into SketchUp and then do things with it basically um, but again I'll do this last then up here we've got you know your name <laughs> box you can name this thing you can save um, and the standard undo redo um, on the right side there are a few interesting options too one is this tutorial browser um, beyond what I'm talking about. There's a bunch of other uh, tutorials there. You know, if you went to the uh, 3D Basecamp sessions, of course, you most probably have modeled your way through the Vancouver Cauldron example. And then finally, there's a forums button, which gets you right to the sub forum on the SketchUp 
a website uh, that deals with these live components and Trimble Creator. So that is, of course, a great way to you know discuss any issues that you have and to um, actually reach the developers, which is which is really nice. Okay, so let me show you what's happening in my model here, just so that you know what what happens with all of this here. So I created a few parameters number of boxes in X, for example, which is then, of course, turned into a point grid, uh, which then drives the actual boxes right there. Right here. Um, so you have to set parameters. Parameters can easily be added at any point in, in this grid. Um, actually, you can add any of these nodes by simply double clicking in this space and typing in what you need. Gives you a option of you know what's what's available or you actually have a menu to the right of this where then of course you have all of these options so i could go to a parameter number and then i add that particular note again i'm going to cover all of that in a separate video but just just so that you know where these come from that's that's how you add these then there's two kinds of connectors. One is this you know, thin connector, which is basically a data connector. And if I click on one node and this output um, button, basically, then you can see that my value here is connected to the resolution in X and Y on the point grid. And so that's, that's how that goes. Um, uh, parameters get pushed back and forth this way and those parameters can be all kinds of things numbers or other parameters it can be lists too which is exactly what's happening here um, and then I don't use it in here but you can see when I hover over some of these there's also this kind of wider tail that's where now you can um, push geometry that you've created into another node so that's how that connects that geometry connects then to whatever other node you would add there. But again, I'm not using that right here because I didn't need to, <laughs> basically. But um, yeah, let's, let's go back to number of boxes. Um, you'll see it's a parameter and then it actually has a few options. If I click on this left, this input button um, that appears when I highlight the, the node, at this point, you'll see that there's, um, you know, there's a value. This is basically what I, what is picked right now, right there. As a default, that can be set. Um, minimum, maximum values, step values. There's a bunch of, you know, controlling parameters. All of that stuff you can either set right here. So uh, any of these I can change. So I can say, I don't know, 25. <laughs> and by changing it here, of course, it changes it there and within the model, but you won't see anything right now. Um, or you can have a parameter or data inputs coming into any of these connectors here. So that's really a good way to, to understand that. And then, of course, it's data outputs, and that depends on very much on what, what it is you're uh, working with. And in this case, the value is what I needed. So that, of course, moves on to the next one, and there are usually others too. Now, next I used a point grid. So I had my number of boxes in X and Y. So now I'm translating that into a grid. Um, that grid has an origin, which, you know, I set at zero, zero, but it could, of course, be um, set parametrically as well. Then I have number of points in X and Y. Could do Z, but I don't need it. So I'm just going to stay with one. And then I actually manually entered the spacing right here. And, um, and that's good enough for, for me right now, but, but that could be, of course, also parametric. Now, a quick word on this. The units right now basically work in millimeters. That, I'm assuming, is going to be really workable in any unit system. And actually, if you right-click on the empty space there, you see the various units popping up. OK, so then from the point grid, <clears throat> This point grid here then connects and, and what I connected basically is the points, the list of points right there to 
the boxes. And that basically means that, you know, based on the number of boxes in X and Y, I created a point grid, and from that I created boxes. Now, all of the stuff that's happening down here basically just modifies the height of those boxes. So I'm taking the X and Y from the point grid, and I'm moving that down to do something with it, and then I'm pulling that back up as a vector that then gives me the scale of each of those boxes. Pretty straightforward. Um, always takes a little bit of <laughs> you know, trial and error, and it took me a little while to get this um, sorted, but, but in principle, that's how that works. OK. So now let me show you what else is happening here. So like I said, the, those points are being moved down. Now I'm doing a simple addition of those so that I basically get this diagonal behavior. Then the result of that gets pulled down here, where now we divide the period, basically just you know a factor, <clears throat> um, by that. Then I'm going to use the result pop that into a sinus conversion, then I get my result list, and I'm going to use that to multiply with the amplitude right here, and then become the scale factor. And I'll talk about this x, y, z to vector in a second, but, but that's what you got to do in between there. Now, on the sine uh, node, let me show you one quick other feature function. <laughs> If I click on the results here or on the output button so that I get my results list, um, there's a little uh, you know, uh, uh, magnifying glass here. If you click that, you basically get the parameters that are being calculated. So these are all the sign parameters for all of those boxes that have been calculated and um, that I can then move on to the next one. So quick tip here is that you can always inspect what you have in terms of parameters, because usually you will need to troubleshoot the whole thing one way or another um, by looking at the um, magnifying glass, and then you can refresh that. Um, one thing that I've learned in the meantime is that the node has to be active, i.e. has to be selected, in order for this to work properly, because it could be that you've selected another node, like the one before, and then you're looking at the result list. Well, in this case, it shows it, but but in some cases, it doesn't give you the updated uh, list of numbers. So, so keep that in mind when you're working with us. Now then, one thing that I find myself using quite a bit is this XYZ to vector um, node, which is, well, you take three parameters and you get a vector from it. And this vector, in this case, is a scaling vector um, that looks like this, where now I mapped the sine value to the z scale right there, simply by connecting the result of my calculation to z and keeping x and y as 1. And now I've got a vector because up here at the box, scale needs to be supplied as a vector uh, you could do uniform scale too, if that's what you want, then you can skip the last step, um, but then they scale differently. And what I wanted here was, of course, all of these to scale vertically as opposed to, you know, outward kind of thing. Anyways, and then um, another thing that I've come across is this, where there's a list of items, especially if you have multiples that, that each of these nodes works on, then you want to not connect the first one, not vector, but vector list rather, or like result list, sometimes it's called, to what you have up here. And so now that comes in a scale and the center, again, comes from the point grid right here. And then when I pull all of that together at the last item, I get what you saw at the very beginning. And now I can you know, increase or decrease the number of boxes parametrically, increase or decrease the period, which basically does this sort of thing right there. Uh, and then increase or decrease the amplitude, which of course, you know, makes this fatter or slimmer, <laughs> if you want to think of it that way. Um, one thing that I also found kind of, you know, counterintuitive, but, but it makes a ton of sense is, um, 
that what you see on the left is really determined by what's highlighted on the right because this way you can you know step your way through one of these graphs and and troubleshoot because then you'll see on the left what's happening uh, up to that point so whenever you highlight something like point grid for example right now that's all that's shown on the left and now i can't see it because it's all little white points but but um that is uh an important thing to remember you know so if i keep clicking my way through there then everything up to this point of the highlighted node will be calculated and will be shown on the left and now of course there's nothing there because my boxes aren't created yet but once i click and highlight this box node now i get to see those boxes so that's that's a important thing to keep in mind there okay so those are kind of the basics um then when you're done working on this you hit save and after a second you click on open in sketchup <clears throat> which opens this as you can see here in the sketchup app but but in a in a um, configuration viewer which means you you get basically what you had before but you also see this configure window which is the one that shows up in sketchup and then you know if you wanted to do configuration here you can do that then you click on download but you don't have to configure because ultimately um, that stays live and then uh, right here there's my there's my um, uh, downloaded component i'm gonna open um, the web version of sketchup right now but again this works with you know the web and the ipad and the um, desktop version just as well which is actually a great feature of this anyways and now i'm just going to drag that sketchup file in here did not seem to have worked there we go then we're going to import this as a component I can place it somewhere and after placing it you immediately get this configure um, dialog where now again you can do the configuration just as before and as i mentioned before keep in mind that this all happens over the web and gets streamed and is is therefore uh you know has, has a slight lag to it but i'm assuming that this will improve you know over time as the the whole um system uh improves all right and then of course you can keep modeling with this you can make copies you can you know model anything else uh you can actually close this configure window and then just keep in mind that if you want it back you double click um, your component and you're back to there okay so that's in principle how trimble creator works and how you go from creating something to having that in sketchup and being able to work with this parametrically uh, and keeping it parametric and of course there's there's a whole lot more to cover so i'll do that in some other videos but uh, this gives you a bit of an intro you know to how this works and how i like to work with it <laughs> and i hope you um, you know try this out and, and see how this works for your workflow all right more on this soon i hope this was useful see you all soon